everyone please put their hands together for the amazing, incredible Fred King. To start, to be. This is how the Cambridge Dictionary defines the word become. To start, to be suggests change. Change is exciting. Change leads to new adventure, new experiences and the shaping of you. It helps you become you. But when do we start to take the excitement out of change? When do we stop trying to become ourselves and start trying to be someone else? My name is Fred Kearney. I'm 18 years old. I live on a farming property situated in Coonabarabran, a town of about 3,000 people in northwest regional New South Wales. And I want to become something. When I was a younger, much smaller boy, I would dream of becoming my older brother. His name is Oliver and is three years older than me. I would go where he went, wear what he wore and do what he did. It is funny looking through old photos as little Fred always seemed to appear, appear wherever he was. Even here, on his first day of school, I somehow found my way there. This aspiration to become Ollie carried on for quite a while, to the extent of taking things from his room and using it, abiding by my theory that if he had it, it must be the good stuff. Although, as cliche as it sounds, they say all good things come to an end. I believe this aspiration to become my older brother ended when there was a clear split, a divide in our roads of the things we enjoyed doing. This became quite apparent to me when he started riding wild bucking bulls for so-called fun in the Northern Territory. Anyone who rides a bull is chasing one of these. A big metal engraved buckle which goes on your belt. Effectively a status symbol for all cowboys. But I figured I could lose my front teeth many other ways <laughs> and get these buckles he was chasing on eBay for much cheaper than the cost of some medical bills. Whilst this ambition to become my older brother abruptly stopped, the ambition to become someone, or at least something, didn't. You may be getting the impression that I'm an 18-year-old boy from a small country town who has no business at all delivering a TED talk on what it means to become you. But after 18 years on this planet, I've learned a few things that I believe can help empower others and allow you the next generation of this country to become you. Because what's the point of wearing an uncomfortable pair of pants that you don't think looks good on you anyway? I go to a school where it's the norm to own a pair of Ariat high top boots and a pair of jeans. And I love this trait about my school. The people there are the greatest friends and are some of the most genuine people I know. And I myself own a pair of these boots and multiple pair of jeans, and I loved wearing them everywhere I went, as they're a, sta a fashion staple piece within the life I live. But after a while, I found that I wasn't a cowboy. I wasn't my brother or my friends who lived and breathed these boots and jeans. And I recognised that it wasn't because I didn't want to become these people. It was purely because these weren't me. I didn't want to try and become something. I wasn't. So I got a pair of these. You could have sworn that I dropped a nuclear bomb with the shockwave that caused within my friend group. <laughs> but after all, after all the fears of what they would say and the questions I would get asked faded away on what kind of boots these were, the reality was that I didn't get asked a single one of these questions. No one thought of me differently. No one questioned them. I realised the power of being yourself in an environment where there is an expectation to confine to social norms. I realised the power which we all have to initiate change. This small, somewhat insignificant moment in my life opened my eyes up on what it means to become you. For so long, I kept trying to play it cool in uncomfortable shoes until I found my own that fitted me perfectly. I'm not here today trying to get you to buy a pair of white shoes. I want you to find the shoes that you like. The ones which you think best suit you. Even if your friends or family don't have the same kind. I wish for you to find, to find your shoes so you can become you. So there's my first point today. Find the shoes that fit you, not someone else. Discover your identity 
and be comfortable in it. I spoke to my smaller, older brother, who would despise me calling him that. It didn't take me long to realise that becoming him was unachievable. However, I identified the traits of having a willingness and acceptance of challenge that Ollie has, even if it is to hold on to a wild animal that weighs over a tonne. I figured that if you put all the wildness of being a cowboy aside and strip it right back, it is really just someone who wants to have a go. And if they fall off, get slammed up against a metal railing, bucked off, well, they'll get up, dust themselves off, and go again. So I started to implement that into my own life. I wanted to become someone who wasn't afraid to have a go at something new, wasn't afraid to fall off, and wasn't afraid to get back on. I did this as I wanted to become someone who always had a go. I didn't do it to become him or to try and beat him at his own skill. It was to identify a positive trait in someone else and implement it in my own life. Now, this ability to not become caught up in becoming someone else completely is often a challenge for our current generation. In the society we live in today, we are often overwhelmed with a plethora of opinions, ideas and suggestions from all different mediums, all coming from the device which currently sits in my pocket. From relationship updates, holiday photo dumps, current affairs and what people had for breakfast, it is easy to become consumed and invested in the lives of others. Whilst people may be quick to jump aboard and claim how outrageous it is, it is not hard to understand why. They have the good looks, the amazing talents, the fame and the extravagant breakfast with an even better view. I even still to this day find myself scrolling through Instagram wondering what it would be like to live that life. And I'm often able to call myself out, trying to become that, to become them. I'm not another person who's going to fuel the ever-present war against social media and technology, as I believe is a very powerful tool. In fact, it is why I'm fortunate enough to speak here today. Whilst we're able to gain an insight into the toxic lives of some, I believe we often weigh ourselves down with this aspect, and people are quick to point this out. What if we began to use it as a tool to help you become you? I'm an avid sports fan. Anything and everything to do with physical activity I've been consumed with since, since a young age. From rugby to semi-pro birthday cake eating. I also love to follow my favourite athletes online, such as Michael Hooper, an Australian pro rugby player. I often see him on whatever platform it is, showing off the newest equipment and the fame he gets to live. And instead of thinking how amazing it would be to live that life, I bring myself back to the fact that he had to get there somehow. Sports is about training, working hard, after hours in the dark and even on the worst of days. It is about, it is about getting up, getting yourself up even when you don't want to. Being able to share that mindset through social media is the unintentional, unrecognised motivation that he's spreading, allowing us to be positively impacted. Athletes are often the most heavily scrutinised people online. But if you were capable to take away all the antics, we can recognise their ability and determination to work for a goal. I would like to become someone like that, who is driven to achieve the goals. Not the goals of Michael Hooper, but my own goals. This also just doesn't have to be limited to sports. If you take a vast majority of influential individuals online, they started from somewhere often in pretty dire situations. But what if we could use social media and technology in such a way to recognise achievements and to work hard to create success of your own? We don't see these acts and try and recreate someone else's success. We can witness the joy which is released from working towards a goal and implement it into your own life. Whether it is as simple as getting your homework done or as extravagant as getting through your last year of school. Become the person to identify the willingness to work for something that has meaning in your own life. So that is my second point for today. Don't become consumed in becoming someone else. Become consumed in being the best version of you. I live in a rather remote area. And one thing I've become accustomed to over the years is travel. Something which I've noticed is the conditions of road and how they affect your journey. From potholes, the size of beach balls and corrugated dirt roads, sometimes getting from point A to point B is a bit of a challenge. 
However, whilst noticing the conditions ahead, it always fascinates me about the journey which some roads can take you on. Some roads are sealed and in great condition. And sure, yeah, they can get you there on time and often without a flat tyre and damaged car, but there's never really a sense of relief or reward at the end. The rough ones take time, effort and concentration, but it is these challenges which allow for a sigh of relief at the end. It is the fact that the road less taken, the one you don't want to go down, as you know the challenges which lie ahead, is the one which will give you the greatest sense of achievement. It is not just about travelling though. In life we often fall victim to choosing the easy option first. Sure, you usually get a job done, but at what cost? Do you still get that dopamine effect of accomplishment? If you could become someone who in the face of challenge accepts this jewel and gives your very best attempt, you never know what you might find out about yourself. You are stronger than you know and you can handle any road. Point three, take the unsealed road and in, and in the words of renowned poet Robert Frost, take the road less travelled. You never know what you might find out. So why must you be sitting here today listening to me tell you how to become you? I haven't made breaking research in a medical field, I haven't sailed the seven seas, I haven't even gotten through my last year of school yet. So what right do I have to be giving a TED talk? Well, I also had this predicament in preparing for this talk today. However, I found that I've become someone who I'm proud to be and I'm proud to say it. I've become someone who wants to be better, not for the purpose of good looks or influence, but for the betterment of myself. I've become someone who is not afraid to become me. I want to leave you today feeling empowered with the ability to become you, to find the traits which you desire and believe most important. I wish you to find the shoes which fit you. I want you to, be to not become consumed in other people's lives. Become consumed in yours. Find the things which you want to achieve and chase hard and fast after them. And take the unsealed road, regardless of the damage which may be done. I wish for you to be the very best version of you. If you become someone who in the face of challenge puts on a brave face and gets through it, you have a positive influence on those around you. We struggle to recognise the ability which we all have to initiate change, positive change, and you have this power. Be yourself. Don't be afraid to show people who you are. If you become you, you never know who you may become. Instead of chasing the aspiration to become someone else and the dream of replicating success, I have become me. I have always wanted to attend a TED Talk. I just never thought I'll become the person to give one. Thank you.